So, Dr. Voda, today in rehearsal, you spoke to the ensemble and told them a story about Husa's apotheosis from the perspective of the composer. Can you tell us that story? Sure. Um, I had the opportunity to play the piece uh, at the University of Michigan, and Carol Husa came as the guest composer. And as part of one of the rehearsals, we had a chance to ask him some questions, and one of the girls in the ensemble stood up and said, why did you do this? It sounds ugly. It's terrible. No one's going to like it. It makes me angry. What, what were you thinking when you did this? And so everything got really quiet. And he looked at her and he said, well, you know, one day I was at my cottage on Lake Cayuga and I came out and the lake was just filled with dead fish. And it was a beautiful morning. The sky was blue, the hills, the forest, and everything was dead. And he said, I saw all my neighbors come out, and everybody looked at that, and they just shook their head and went in, and nobody did anything about it. And so I thought to myself, you need to do something about this. And then I thought, but you're just a composer. What can you do? So I went in the house and talked to my wife and told her what I was thinking and feeling, and she just looked at me and said, well, then you're going to have to write a piece about this. And then he looked at this young lady and he said, so I was writing a piece about the destruction of the earth and the death of all the people and children and future generations and the loss of everything that was beautiful. And I just couldn't figure out a way to make it pretty. Hi, my name is Avery Pettigrew. I play French horn in Umwell. Um, I'm talking to you about Apotheosis of the Earth by Carol Husa. Um, it's a very interesting piece. We get to do a lot of different things like um, quarter tones and um, flutter tonguing, which is always interesting. Um, it's a really interesting piece. Like It's just sort of the world falling apart, and that's what it's supposed to sound like, and that's what it does sound like. Hi, I'm Sarah Balzer. I play oboe in Umwell. What? Uh, about those interesting elements technically that you're able to do contribute to like an overall sound for the piece. Do you enjoy that sound? Um, I actually do. I think it's really neat. A lot of people don't, um, but the point of the piece is not to be pretty. It's to um, make people understand the kind of destruction that we do to the planet. Great. Well, thanks so much, Sarah. Um, okay, so next, could you describe just a little bit about the rehearsal we just saw? The, the blog will contain some footage of that rehearsal, maybe a little bit about the process that we are going through today. Okay. Um, so I've, I've conducted this piece several times, and I played it. One of the things I told the ensemble in rehearsal is one of the things I've learned about this piece is people don't like to play it. <laughs> um, because the experience of playing it when you're in the middle of all of these kind of mass sonorities is not the impression you get when you're outside the piece listening to it. And because everyone's role is so kind of individualized, it's not a piece that works very well to sort of stop and segment. You have to play it in the continuity of what you're doing. So rehearsing this piece is a little different in that we have to talk a little bit about what we're going to do in some depth and then play like long stretches of music and then sort of reflect on what we did, which is a normal rehearsal project process, but it, it seems to happen over a longer span. So that's what today's rehearsal is about, and a lot of this is just trying to find the right sound for the piece, trying to create the right sound, the balances within the ensemble so that everybody can hear what they're doing in, in those ways.
be louder sooner on that. <laughs> Also, I think if you could crescendo more like within the first measure or two after you started 68 to help carry that forward. Take it right on 68. Trumpet, if it's possible to play with a little, yeah, that's good. And with a little more front on the mute for the guys or gals with strings. So we get some articulation here. So. Okay, 68. Great. And then how about one last question. Uh, you talk about you know, the, the maybe harsh, ugly nature of the sounds that we hear, and then Hoos's uh, impetus for writing the piece. What makes you want to program the piece, and what personal feelings uh, do you have about the work? Uh, I actually love this piece. I played the second performance of this piece. It was my first concert with my high school band I played this piece. And I was the last chair clarinet player. And I thought this was the most amazing thing that ever happened to me. And this is when I decided I wanted to be a musician, was mm. playing this piece. Wow. Um, and the piece, I think, speaks to me in a lot of ways. I think the message of the piece is something that's really important to me. Um, the fact that it makes sort of sophisticated, nuanced sounds out of this mass of winds and percussion, mm -hmm. I think, is, is something that, that makes me want to program it. And also Carol Husa is one of the great composers of the 20th century. He's a Pulitzer Prize winner. He is a world renowned figure in the musical world. And Carol Husa says that he believes that this is his best piece of music. So those are why I think it's important. All right.